Sabo na vetu? Yabo. Shap onja na otiam? Shap, shap. Uba ni kama? Uplo mava? Mokosu ni kaba ni uplo me tuacha. David Tuan. E tuacha? Alright. Awo mchele ka ngana otiam uti, njengo mba wena uu me trick this year. Hii ni nkoso yako, ngempilo yako from, say, next year going forward? Okay, firstly, I want to meet people, know the industry and the corporate world. Yeah, and achieve more goals. That's how I've set myself up. In law, Funugu, which industry specifically? Uh, commercial industry. I want to deal with businesses and many companies. Okay. Uti and Funuk Tilang, I'm a business, I'm a company, I'm a name. And uh, he has exactly the right question for our teacher. What is your question for our teacher? What is meant by McDonald's index? What is meant by the term McDonald's index? It makes me hungry. And yes, fact, I was about to say. <laughs> right? And it actually is a reference to McDonald's. So let's just check it out a little bit. We've got here, the Big Mac index was invented by an economist in 1986. And it was a light-hearted way um, to guide where the currencies are at their correct level. So it is based on the PPP theory, which is the purchasing power theory, parity which basically means that two identical baskets of goods and services should cost the same in two different countries. And the McDonald's index, um, a burger is the basket of goods. So basically this burger should cost the same in any two, the, the same amount in any two countries. All right, this was found on this link. You can check it all out over there, but let's move on. In January, 2013, and based on the cost of a Big Mac in South Africa, which is 18 rand and 33 cents, and an exchange rate of 9 rand and 5 cents per dollar, our currency was undervalued by approximately 53%. So when we were compared to the US dollar and taking into account the McDonald's index, where two items are meant to be the same price, our currency with the McDonald's burger was undervalued by 53%, meaning in America, it was 53% more for a McDonald's burger. So before we look at some of the other financial indicators, let's do a calculation using exchange rates. And our example looks like this. A jewelry company imported watches from Switzerland. The cost per watch was eight rand, was the cost per, cost per watch was uh, 830 euros and the exchange rate was at the, um, the exchange rate was one euro is equal to eight rand and 24 cents. Let's look at our questions. If the company imported 120 watches, what was the cost for all the watches in South African rands? And B, determine the cost of a watch, of one watch in South African rands. So they told us that one watch is 830 euros in, Swiss, in Switzerland. They want to know what 120 watches would cost. So how do we work that out? We know that one watch is 830 euros. We multiply by it 120, which is what we want to work it out in. And if we do that, we can see that 120 watches gives us 99,600 euros is the cost of 120 watches. That's quite a lot of money. Now we want to work out what this would cost in rands. So they told us in the beginning that one euro is equal to eight rand and 24 cents. And we know that 120 watches cost us 99,600 rands. So what would that cost in 99,600 euros? So what would that cost in rands? Well, we know that one rand is eight rand 24 cents. So we multiply the 99,600 by 8 rand and 24 and that gives us 820,704 rands for 120 watches. But what is the cost of one watch? We may not need this, so that many. So we divide that amount by 120 and we've got 6,839 rand and 20 cents. It's quite an expensive watch. Exchange rates are often given to four decimal places. So use the decimal places but only round off in the last um, answer and round off to two decimal places because your amount can change, your value changes if you round off too early. Let's look at some of the more important financial indicators quickly. So some of the common indicators is the CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index, and this is used to calculate inflation rate, which they use a lot because there's lots of inflation rate going on. We've got the CPIX, which is the Consumer Price Index without home loans. So people who don't got home loans, this is their financial indicator. And we've got the CPIF, which is the food index, and it only has food items in the basket. So it only accounts for food. We've also got the Gross, Nash, gross National <laughs> Product, the GNP, and this is the total market value of all goods and services that are produced in the country for a specific period of time. So the G GNP is used to determine whether there has been growth in the economy or not. Uh, Statistics South Africa collects and collates all data in South Africa in order to calculate the inflation rate. 
Now, if we go according to the stats essay, um, they used the year 2000 as the base year. And all items for that year in one particular month have an index of 100, meaning 100%. So in 2000, all items had a base level of 100%. So if we look at the goods and services generally, if they increase from year to year, we know that an index for an item is likely to be more than 100 for years after 2000 and less than 100 for years before 2000. Let's look at an example. Below is a table showing the index for item X. And we've got a table and it's got a time span between 1998 and 2004 and the different index. Since our question A goes like this. What was the percentage change in the price of item X from 2000 to 2004? So if we look at our table, here's 2000, that's 100. 2004 is 115. What is the price? What is the price change? So we're going to take our percentage in 2004 and minus our percentage in 2000. And we saw that 2004 was 115.4%. If we minus 2000, the amount, the index in 2000, which was 100%, we can see that the increase was 15.4%. Question B, in which year after 2000 did the price of an item X drop? And how do you know this? Well, let's look at our table. They're asking us which year did it drop after 2000. So if we look at 2000, we see 100. If we go to 2001, we see 102. That's an increase. If we go to 2002, we see 105. 2003, we see 123.7. That's also an increase. 2004 is 115.4. So if we look closely, that's actually a drop from 123. So now we know that there is, it has dropped in 2004, and we know this because from 2003, the, the index has changed. It went from 123.7% to 115.4%. In other words, in 2003, the price of an item X was 23.7% higher than it was in, in 2000, but only 15.4% higher in 2004. But that's because our base level at 2000 is 100 Okay, see what was the percentage increase per year from 1998 till 2000. So we look at 1998 and that's 94.3 and we go to 2000 and that's 100. How do we work this out? We take it back. We say percentage increase from 1998 to 2000. What was the percentage in, in 2000? It was 100%. And what was the percentage in 1998? It was 94.3%. Um, so we minus that from our 2000 amount. And that gives us 5.7% for two years. But they want to know the individual percentage increase per year. So how do we break that down? We know that it's 57 for two years. So we're going to multiply, divide it, excuse me, divide it by two. And that gives us 2.8%. So now we know that if there was a percentage increase per year of 2.85%. And our question D goes like this. If item X cost 32 Rand in 1999, what was the price in 2003? Okay, so if item S cost 32 Rand in 99, what was the price in 2003? So we know that in 1999, the index was 98.0 and in 2003, the, the index was 105.1. So there's an increase from 1999 till 2003. It was 123.7% in 2003 and 1999 gave us 98%. So again, we're gonna minus the, the lower average, which was in 1999 from the higher average in 2003 and that gives us a 20. 5.7% increase between those years. So the increase in price um, in 2003 is 32 Rand multiplied by that increase, which was the increase in index from 2003 to 1999. That was a 25.7 increase. If we multiply that by 32, that gives us 8 Rand and 22 cents. So we're going to add that 8 Rand and 22 cents to our original 32 Rand, and that gives us 40 Rand and 22 cents. Or alternatively, how you could work out the new price in 2003 is take 32 Rand, which is the amount they give you, and multiply it by 125.7% and that would give you the same answer, 40.22% 22 Rand. Can you just tell us about yourself, just before you ask your question? Well, Mina Wumuto, talkative, I'm very lively and I enjoy challenges. Um, I enjoy helping other people and for me, uh, yeah, well, yeah, I can be shy at times. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I knew her looks smile because she has a gold tooth. 
Not really. Uh, well, I was born in Smile without the gold tooth. Okay. Yes. Right. I know Utiena, she was born in Smile, and that's a, that's a good thing. Not bad at all. So, I'm going to ask you about our teacher, Utiena. My question is, why does the petrol price keep going up? Cool, cool. Why does the petrol price keep going up? I think it's a question we all need to know the answer yes. for. And I got that answer for you. See, the strength or weakness of our rands determines the exchange rate, which, as you should know, fluctuates continuously. So the uh, American dollar is used worldwide and it's a currency in which the price of gold, Brent crude oil and many other commodities is given. So it involves the exchange rate that seems to fluctuate. The cost of imported and exported goods also changes as the exchange rate changes. So as the exchange rate fluctuates, what we pay for our imported and our exported goods changes and this involves petrol and oil. So let's look at the factors that determine our fuel price and we've got a lovely little pie chart here. If we look at this pie chart, we see that there are a number of factors that, inter that determine our petrol price, and it's not just the actual petrol. We've got the basic price of petrol, which is 62.74%, and the rest is made up of a whole lot of other factors. We've got customs, road accident funds, tax, which is quite a stack, um, whole trade profit, etc. There are three major factors that contribute to the basic fuel price in SA, and these are uh, international crude oil prices, the RAND US dollar exchange rates, and the international supply and demand. So we are going to focus on the first two, which is the international crude oil prices and the exchange rate between the dollar and the RAND. Let's look at an example. A few years ago, the price of Brent crude oil rose to approximately $147 per barrel and the cost of a litre of fuel was 10 rand 80 cents. The oil price was then decreased and the cost of petrol was reduced to 7 rand 52 cents per litre. Using ratios determine what the reduced Brent crude oil price per barrel was. So they're asking us what the per barrel was for the crude oil. So we know that per litre it was 10 rand 80 cents and per barrel it was 147 dollars. So they're asking us if it was 7 rand 52 cents for a litre, how much was it for the barrel? So we know that the original price was 10 rand 80 and our reduced price is 7 rand 52. So we're going to put that 752 over our 10 rand 80 because we want to know the difference between the two and we're going to multiply it by 147 per barrel because that was the original price of the barrel. If we do that, we know that for 7 rand 52 cents, it is actually 102 and 36 dollars. 102 rand and 36 cents in dollar. 132 dollars yeah. and 36 cents. Excuse me, this exchange rate is exchanging my brain right here. <laughs> Excuse me. The question for B was the price bar per barrel was in fact only about 78 dollars. What do you think that the price of petrol, why do you think the price of petrol is not higher? Because we can see that the basic price was only 62.74 percent. That's what they accounted for. So we know that the increase in price of crude oil per barrel is only taking into consideration um, basic price, a basic petrol price, and this is only 62.74% of the total makeup of the price. <laughs>